welcome back to Ottoman Asia, Arizona style. As some of you know, you, uh, you may know that I uh, left uh, Cambodia for a couple of months, had to take care of some business here in Arizona, uh, get, my, get my yearly physical and all that good stuff out of the way. But here I am, I'm staying with my daughter, Pretty close to the border of Mexico and Arizona, and a uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. And walking around the lake that is kind of like surrounded by HOAs, but um, yeah, they stock it all the time, and uh, a lot of a lot of people come here and fish. So that's kind of neat. Wow, it's a little bit breezy out here. And uh, well, hopefully this thing works with a little fuzzy thing, so you can hear me okay. Uh, well, what's what's going on with me, and when am I gonna come back to Cambodia or Laos or Thailand or wherever? Uh, I got here about oh I don't know uh, three weeks ago, and I had the worst case of jet lag. I've never had jet lag. I had the worst case of jet lag ever. It was like a three day jet lag. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's actually getting old, I guess. But no, that, that was compounded by, uh, by allergies from uh, two long haired dogs in the house, 170 pounds and one 90 pounds. So yeah, they shed about five pounds a day. And uh, uh, three times already, yeah, three times in three weeks I've had, um, sinus issues last time was really bad I've never never experienced pain in my sinuses like that ever before but that that happens um, but uh, anyways uh, my flight was was really long um, not because uh, it was airtime or anything but I was it, it seemed long uh, I, I was up 21 hours before I even got on the plane that was my own fault uh, and but but by the time I got up and by the time I actually got into the States uh, it was about, well, to my daughter's house all the way, it was about 50 hours and I didn't get much sleep on <laughs> on the way. Uh, normally I can sleep on the planes, but for some reason I, I couldn't. Um, so that was, that was crappy. Another, another issue here coming back, and I'm, I'm kind of talking about a, almost like a reverse culture shock, but it's not really culture shock, but um, you know, just the environment that, I, that I'm in. Uh, you know, the humidity gets, get a, gets as low as like 11%. And, you know, coming from being used to 80, 85, 90%, <laughs> it, it really uh, does a number on not only my nose, <clears throat> my sinuses, but also my skin. You know, I gotta like put on lotion every day so my skin will stay on my body. Yuck. But, uh, you know, people are asking me about, well, what about culture shock or reverse culture shock? And, you know, some people really experience that after being gone for, you know, nine months like I was. Um, but I get here and I really don't experience too much of it other than, you know, the, the environmental. But as far as like the gas prices, um, you know, it's cheaper here in Arizona than, uh, than it was in, uh, in Siem Reap. So that wasn't an issue, but I, I don't I don't drive much anyways. I don't I don't own a car anymore. That was uh, my bucket list item. <laughs> um, but the food prices, yeah. Now if there was anything that was going to give me culture shock, it'd be the food prices. Uh, but I knew it was going to be drastically different. Very easy to to understand that, um, and so it really didn't bother me and. One, th one thing that I have noticed is uh, the food availability, or you know, not just necessarily food, but some of the things, uh, it's disconcerting you go to the store and there seems to be a lot of, uh, a lot of empty shelves around and, and like, uh, didn't see that, uh, you know, before I, I left, except, you know, during the pandemic when everybody was freaking out. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm talking about there. What do I miss from Cambodia, other than Cambodia itself? 
Uh, I miss my friends in Cambodia. You know who you are. And um, yeah, I mean, I had great times with my friends, uh, both uh, expats and, and my, my Khmer friends. I've met many Khmer friends and uh, uh, you know who you are too. So, um, uh, what else? Oh, my apartment. Now, if you take a look, I'll, I'll, I'll put it up in the where, wherever up there. Yeah, I've got notes. Um, now you can see, um, uh, you can see a, a nice video of my apartment. And uh, I really miss it. It was really, really sweet place to be. Uh, right on, right on the river. So that's that was kind of nice. Uh, also, I miss my motorbike. Hi, how you doing? Uh, I miss my motorbike riding around anytime I want. It was, uh, it was a nice freedom to have that. Uh, once you get used to driving in Cambodia, which uh, was, well, it was a fun learning experience, you know. Um, I really, really miss that. And just going around, being out, uh, being out in the villages and being out in the, uh, out in nowhere, you know. But I do miss, uh, I do miss the, the I guess the, the, the landscape and the, and the wilderness of Cambodia, just riding through the, the fields and uh, the trees and all that. And miss that, of course. Uh, uh, the weather, I guess that goes along also with what I talked about um, with uh, with the humidity. Uh, you know, it, uh, it it it. It only rained once since I've been here, and it was just a little a little sprinkle. wasn't all that bad. But I do miss I do miss the, the warmth. It's getting cold here for me, but I still enjoy um, enjoy the sun. It's very peaceful here in in its own way. It's a the neighborhood is actually a very quiet neighborhood. Now people will ask me, ah, what do you like so much about Cambodia? You know, I mean, what is it about Cambodia? What is it about Siem Reap or whatever that uh, that draws you to it? And you know, I spend a lot of time by myself, uh, and that's by choice. And I get a lot of time to to think about things. No, I don't argue with myself, but <laughs> when I do, I know it's time to go to the home. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, I thought about that, you know, and people ask me, what is it? And and I'd have to like, just whittle it down to two words, and that would be peaceful vibrancy. And you wonder, oh, what the heck? What do you mean, peaceful vibrancy? Uh, and that's that's the best I could do. You know, watch some of my other videos. You know, there there you got some times where it's very vibrant when you're out on the street, you're walking down, uh, you know, by the parks or by the river uh, downtown. Very vibrant and and just more so than you know any place in the West that I've been. And and also at the same time, it is very very peaceful, at least at least for me. So um, you know, I think that's that's the biggest thing I can. Uh, I, can, I can point out as to uh, what I like about Cambodia so much. Peaceful vibrancy. Uh, you know, every time I'd be up on my, my porch looking down at the, the street and you know, just, I mean, you walk down the street and there's, there's people out everywhere, there's food stalls, there's, uh, you know, I mean, it's just not the neighbor. Uh, you know, it's people that, that want to get to know you, especially, you know, being an expat and they're always going to ask you, where are you from? <laughs> that, that always starts a sometimes very long conversations, which are, which are great. I, I enjoy that. But yeah, it's uh, very peaceful to be vibrant, moving town, lots of things happening uh, almost any time of the day, except when it gets really hot. And then at that time, you know, people are taking their, their two hour lunch break. They, kids are out of school and um, and all that all that kind of good stuff so you might ask well what's happening to you uh, next and some of you might not ask <laughs> okay I'll tell you um, well you know I'm here for the holidays and to take care of some business once they 
get taken care of the business. Uh, I'll be flying back to Southeast Asia. Uh, exactly where right now, I'm not 100% sure. I will end up uh, eventually back in Siem Reap. Oh yeah. Uh, but if, if I don't, if I don't go somewhere else first for a couple of months, such as uh, Laos, I've been wanting to go up to Laos for, uh, well, since I left it last time. Uh, I think I'm going to fly, well, I've been to Bangkok for a week or two and then uh, take the train up to uh, Vientiane and, and spend about three months until after the, uh, the Lao New Year. I, I want to spend the, the Na, Lao New Year uh, up there. I've been to several Songkrans and uh, the Khmer New Year, which was freaking awesome. Check it up. It's, it's up there somewhere. Uh, but, and then from there, I'll, I'll probably go down to um, uh, Cambodia, probably the, uh, the uh, Bangkok, you know. I mean, that's kind of a, the hub around there, as you know, a lot of people would say or think, or utilize it as the hub. You know, from Bangkok, you can get just about anywhere on a, on a cheap flight, you know, 100, 120 bucks, unless you're going to go down to Bali or something. I don't know how much that would run. But um, that's my plan to uh, end of April, I suppose, I'll be back in Cambodia. And uh, hopefully this time I will be getting my own motor scooter, a brand new one or really close to brand new. And I can, I can do a little bit longer trips. Like the, the big trip I wanted to make when I was there was over to uh, Krate to the, um, that's a, that is a, uh, a town right on the, uh, the Mekong River, and that also um, is where they have the the Irrawaddy dolphins, uh, very almost extinct. Um, I like to see them before they'll go away. You know, go out kayaking. I love kayaking too. But that was like uh, about an eight and a half, nine hour uh, ride if you're driving in a car or whatever. And me on a motorbike on those roads, you never know. Um, you know, four hours is probably the max to do. Maybe, maybe you can push it. Uh, but I wanted to go halfway or so, see how far I can get, and stop for the night, and then continue on over and stay. I don't know, four or five, six days until I see the freaking dolphins. You know. But uh, you know, with those bikes that I was renting, you know, they had like you know, <laughs> three hundred thousand kilometers on them or some crap. Um, it's it's really kind of a not a good idea to travel uh, up in the northern Cambodia uh, unless you know you have a really really good uh, transportation. I understand the the northern route to go from Siam Reap to uh, to, to Krati is uh, goes through some pretty unique uh, areas and villages, and uh, if you break down, there's not much help, you know. <laughs> Uh, but there's always, there's always people, there's always help, great people, come on people. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I don't know exactly when I'm going to be flying out of here. That all depends on uh, some of my medical uh, appointments. I should know a lot more tomorrow, actually. Most important one I'm going to be making tomorrow. So anyways, you know the saying, if you're still here, you're one of my number one fans. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for being here. And stay, keep on keeping on. That was kind of dorky. Stay keeping. Yeah. Okay, goodbye.